very gentle, but you know, God's got no regular. Okay. Unusual things happen, different things happen, and that's one thing about first life. You love to see different things taking place. And why? Because God's working in people's lives. But we'd like to welcome you here and, and let you know that we appreciate it. Uh, right now, I would like to take the time to especially thank, thank all of the, the teachers, uh, the ones that helped put up the decorations, the, the ones that provided the food, the ones that, that did the recreation. We had a, we had a great day yesterday. Uh, I think it was Mike said, he said, I don't know about anybody else. He said, but I've had fun. Now, when adults are having fun, that's what God wants us to do, it? and we, we should be able to have fun. This morning, I really, you know, don't know what else to add to what's been said. Uh, if you watch the words to the last video that was up there, especially the ABC, stick that back up there. That is the whole key to salvation. Oh, and as you seen here this morning, we've had no, teachers that were dedicated to trying to teach these children what Jesus Christ did, what he came for, and what he stands for. This morning, I was planning on sharing just a little bit about one of the, one of the people it wasn't mentioned a whole lot this morning. They talked about the centurion. They talked about the faith that he had in coming to Christ. And that's the way we have to be. We have to, we have to operate our faith. Go into God and be the Christ of faith. Let him have his, have his way. And there was one other character that they, they studied about. And as I read about him and I thought about him, I thought, you know, this guy is so typical of adult people today. And the way that we, or a lot of people, approach God and Jesus Christ. And the scripture from there was taken from, from Luke, and it was about a man that came to God, or came to Jesus Christ, seeking a relationship with God. It was a person that, that should have known a relationship and what it should mean. But you know, today in our world, where we work, where we're at in recreation, where we stand in society, a lot of people are afraid to make that step, to reach out and to accept Jesus Christ. The person I'm talking about was Nicodemus. He, he was a man of probably high political influence. He was a religious person, a very religious person. He was probably what you would consider in the upper class of people today. And he saw Jesus and what he was doing. But he was afraid to come out in public and to really see who Jesus was. So he made an appointment. I say he made an appointment. I don't know how he did it. But he, he did it somehow because he arranged to meet Jesus Christ at night. I thought about Nicodemus. I thought about people today and the way that they want to hide their relationship with Christ. And they don't come out publicly. And as I was reading that the story of Nick Davis, I was sitting there and I'm thinking, you know, here he goes at night to meet you. He's walking through the dark streets, and, 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 I, and I thought about uh, in relationship to our theme, the big apple, her and some of the others, maybe, you know, when we went up 
in uh, New York, you know, some of the best, maybe some of you know the best, I had one person relate to me about the danger of walking the streets at night out there by yourself. I thought about next demons. If you walk through the streets and through the shadows, down those dark hallways, to meet Jesus. You know, if, if, he, if he got closer and closer, he was probably looking around and said, well, any of my friends, any of my colleagues, or any of my associates watching me on the air, probably looking at him from every dark corner trying to see what was going on. And you know, if he got closer, I can imagine for you that have accepted Jesus Christ, if you got closer to Jesus, did your heart stop pounding? Did your hands get clammy? Did you get nervous? Did you wonder about what's going to happen next when Jesus was tugging the door? I can imagine the big thing as he walked through those shadows down that street. He got closer to Christ. He became nervous. He became probably cautious and wondering about what he was going to say and how he was going to approach Christ and what he was going to ask him. His heart probably began to beat faster. And then, there he was. Standing before God's only Son, Jesus Christ. And there he was, afraid somebody would see him and had to meet him in the dark. But the thing about it was, he did go he did it. He had a lot of, enough faith that he went to commit Jesus Christ. Today, in our society, a lot of people are not encountering Jesus Christ for the same reason that Nicodemus went at night. Because they're afraid somebody will see them, somebody will say something about them, somebody will ridicule them. But when Jesus starts touching you, the Holy Spirit starts working. Even if you have to go at night, or you have to go in the dark, or you have to go to some other place or somewhere that's not public, that Spirit will still pull you. You know, the remarkable thing about that Jesus was, even though he had some questions that for to answer, he had Christ specifically about how you get into the kingdom of heaven. Christ knew that Nicodemus was a religious person. He was a good person. He had a, a knowledge of the scripture. And you can go and read the whole story. And it's interesting of how it transpired. And Christ told him what? He must be born again. The ABC of what was put up here. That's what Nicodemus had to go to. And he didn't understand when Christ responded to it, you must be born again. I think sometimes today that phrase cures a lot of people away. Because it's something even today people, a lot of people don't understand. But when Christ explained to it, it's not a physical birth, it's a spiritual birth. Mm-hmm. And then if you read on down in, in the scripture in John, about what uh, Christ told him to him, the, the very verse which was up here a while ago, about accepting Jesus, that God sent him there to bring salvation. And not do some great thing that, that we have to do. Being born again is, is nothing to be afraid of. It's, nothing, it's a term that sometimes scares people. But it's simply coming to the point and realization of who Jesus Christ is. And if we, we, go through, we can go through those steps that we have here, we admit to God where we're at and repent. Then we go to the part that we believe that Jesus is God's Son. And he came into this world to save this faith, uh, not just to save this, not just to save the first world, but to save anyone. 
even Nicodemus, a person, even though he was ashamed to do it in public at that point, he still came to save Jesus. Just like he came to save the person that was crucified on the cross beside him. That person was born again. And a few Sundays ago, we, we looked in depth at what it took to be saved. And the only thing that that one person on that cross said, he said, remember me when I am in the temple that I came. And what did Christ say? He said, this day I will be with him there. That man was born again. And then the last thing, we need to confess our faith in Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Make a public confession. Some people may read that scripture and they say, well, Nicodemus, did he make a public confession? Yes, he did. You say, well, we, I don't know. But if you remember, after Christ was crucified, when Joseph on the day went to request Christ's body, who was with him? that very night before he took place some other time. That trip in darkness that night, that one appointment, a 20 million with Jesus Christ changed his life forever. <coughs> you are here today, not by accident. No. God called each one of us here for a reason. There was a message in this service that God had for you. 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 Every one of me. There may be one here today that has not confessed Jesus Christ for him saved their life. Maybe this is the day that you need to do it. Maybe you are Christian. Maybe you know all the ABCs about salvation. Maybe you know the ins and outs and the do's and the don'ts. But maybe you're not doing all the do's. Maybe you're like what we said about last Sunday, the Sunday before. Maybe you're a Christian shallow water that don't want to walk out into this. If not, then today is the time in which you need to make that commitment. These young people today, with the enthusiasm with which they got up here today and, and shared with you and I of what they have learned about Jesus Christ and about what He means to them. As adults, if we had that same enthusiasm and as Christians, and we went out these doors with that same enthusiasm and shared it with people we came in contact with, and not be afraid to acknowledge Jesus in the daylight in the public, and let him shine wherever we go, just imagine what a difference it would make. You know, Christ has a special place in his heart for children. Him. He told his disciples, he said, let them come to me. And he also told us, if we don't approach him with the same openness in our hearts as little children, then we're not going to get to us. And just think about it. Could you be as free as these kids were this morning? I wish I I always thought I was all, we're all the time. It's just some, sometimes we are, sometimes we're not. But this morning, I would like to thank you for being here. And again, I would like to thank all the ones that have put so much effort into this Bible. So as we close this morning, I'd like to go to the Lord in prayer. I think... If we look at the message of faith 
the ABCs of salvation that's been presented to 